Okay, so what run was this? This was a Sanguine Depths 15. We're Nightfair, first of all. Then we have Fear of the Skies. There's no Convoke Conduit. So we already have a wrong conduit, I guess? Oh, you forgot to change. Okay, so... Okay, so we already have a wrong conduit, which is gonna um, nerf our damage quite a bit. Because it's tyrannical, so not having the convo conduit nerfs our damage quite a bit. So that's already gonna be a bit bad. Then we're running double on new trinkets. Instructor's Divine Bell with Imperial Ordinance. Okay. Talents trees. Okay, talents are just fine. And we run both. Okay, seems good. So you got Astral Power, it's already good. Managed to get some Astral Power before the key started. Free Celestial Alignment as well. So we have Flask, food. Everything seems to be fine. I like the weaker as here for the trinkets. I think that's really good. So you definitely don't miss it. Okay, so the first thing you did was apply the trinket. Look, Dablon use is a bit tricky, yeah? And I personally um, would skip the double on use on the on the first pull because so here's the thing it's tyrannical so the mobs already have less hp right but you want to get your cooldowns off as fast as you can so if you wait for your um imperial ordinance to come back then like you're delaying your cooldowns by 20 seconds and it's just like meh right now it looks like you're only pulling those mobs though so it, it's actually fun because like, this is like a little bit of a smaller pull. Usually people pull two trash packs together. So it's not actually that bad to use your ordinance here, I would say. I, I think if you're like if you would do a bigger pull here, then I would skip the ordinance and just use Instructor's Divine Bell plus cooldowns and convoke. But since you pulled these mobs first alone. I think it might actually be fine to use your trinket like this. Like, I think that's actually fine. Because this is a pretty small pool, so it's fine. So you got your Imperial Ordinance back now. But your tank would have to pull really quickly for you to get your cooldowns off. Let's see. I would change this weak aura. Um, so you can see the uptime of your buff too. Because right now you can only see the cooldown, right? And you can't see the buff. Because the buff is the important thing, right? You want to know when you have the buff up the Imperial Ordinance. I actually think that you did well because you pulled small. But if you, if you would have pulled everything together, then I would not have used Imperial Ordinance, yeah? Because uh, then you'd need the damage quick. So I would have just skipped my Imperial Ordinance. I would have just used uh, Instructor's Divine Bell plus Convoke. But because you're doing the small pull first, it actually works out for you perfectly, right? What did you do with your Astral Power there? Did it just deplete? Oh, it's already depleting, okay. So I guess you, the key started a bit late, yeah. So you didn't manage to keep your Astral Power here from previously. That, that sucks a little, right? Otherwise you would have enough Astral Power to already start from here. But because uh, the, the key started a bit late, I guess. So you didn't have to add a straw power. Okay, well that, that's fine. So you're casting rafts here to get into Lunar Eclipse. Nice, this is all good. Now you're taunting, you have Starfall up. As soon as you have enough astral power, that's all fine. Okay, so at this point you have your Imperial Ordinance buff. So at this point, as soon as this is being pulled, you should immediately use your cooldowns. As soon as you sunfire them. See, so Sunfire and Convoke. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that was really good. That's exactly what you should have done. You need Taunt to help out your tank. So earlier you didn't actually Taunt, you just put your Vortex, which is fine, right? Typhoon here a little to get the weapons away. That's also fine. It's a bit hard to see uh, which mobs have dots and which don't. Your nameplays are like overlapping a little, right? That can cause some issues sometimes with the um, overview. I personally think that the tree taunt is irrelevant information that you don't necessarily want to see on your nameplates. I personally blacklisted this debuff, the taunt from the trees. I removed it because I figured when I put my trees down, I know that they're taunting, right? So I don't want to see the debuff on the nameplate because I just feel like it's cluttering too much because you have three debuffs on each mob. 
for each tree that you put. So I personally removed this diva from my nameplates. So maybe that's something you want to do as well. At least I personally have a hard time seeing where there's moonfire and where there's not, right? I do see three moonfires here, but I'm not sure if you have moonfire and everything um, because the nameplates are a bit overlapping there. So this starfall I would have skipped because in sanguine depths, the, that, that's something maybe you just did, don't know. And the weapons, the animated weapons, um, they are part of the mob and they despawn. Like you don't actually have to kill them. When you kill the mob, then the weapons also despawn, right? The mobs just spawn animated weapons throughout the, 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 the fight. And once you kill the actual mob, the weapons are also gone. So all the damage that you do to the weapon is actually completely irrelevant, right? So these weapons you don't need to touch at all. Uh, and so at the very end here, at this point you see there's like only a skirmisher left, two skirmishers, and the weapons. And the skirmishers are an 11% HP, like they're almost dead, right? And at this point you refresh your starfall, and now you're in one astral power. But you're refreshing your starfall when the mobs are already dead, right? You, you see those skirmish, like you just press starfall and now the mobs are dead, two seconds later, right? So this starfall, I definitely would have delayed. So I have, I have a starfall up when I enter this next pool. Because now you're pulling these mobs and you still have five seconds of starfall up, but you have zero astral power, right? So it's gonna take you a while to, to get your starfall up again at this point, because you also want to apply your dots and everything. So you end up not having a starfall up here because um, because you starfall at the very end of the previous trash pack, right? This is just like a minor thing though, like this is not a huge mistake by any means. But uh, that's definitely something I would have saved. So we now managed to get the starfall up and he is in solar eclipse at this point. I definitely would have applied all moon fires here in this solar eclipse. When, whenever you're in solar eclipse, you definitely want to make sure that you apply moon fires on everything. Unless you like really struggle with astral power. I guess in this case here, he was struggling with astral power because you see the starfall is about to run out in two seconds. And he's at six astral power. So he's definitely struggling with his astral power at this point. Uh, which could be causing the playstyle where he just doesn't uh, maybe apply enough moon fires. He applied two moon fires. Uh, and now he's reapplying Solar Wrath, uh, I mean Starfall. And there's still some mobs who don't have Moonfire here. There's a bunch of ticks who don't have Moonfire. So I definitely would have applied some more Moonfires here at this point. Now he enters Lunar Eclipse. So this was a bit unfortunate that as soon as you enter Lunar Eclipse here... As soon as you enter Lunar Eclipse... Oh no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Oh no, he interrupted his Starfire, okay. Yeah, so... This, is a, this would have been a really big starfire in Lunar Eclipse. But he had to interrupt the starfire to use trees. So that was a bit unfortunate, to be honest. But it's, it's better to help out the tank so he doesn't die, right? Compared to getting your damage out. This was a... So this star search here again. Like this star search you just cast at the very end. Is also something I wouldn't do because uh, now you enter the next trash group with only 20 astral power, right? It really seemed like a star search that is not necessary, right? Because you see the, there are only ticks alive. These ticks kind of don't really do anything, right? So at this point you use a star search to finish off the tick. Um, which in my opinion really is just gonna slow your overall damage. It's gonna be good for this pack. So you're increasing your damage for this specific pack but you're decreasing your overall DPS because when you enter the next um, pack, you just don't have enough astral power to starfall, right? Trees are really, really good, and he's also placing them really well. A lot of moonkins, um, a lot of moonkins use trees, but then they don't actually use it properly, as in, like they just randomly put the trees at the start of a pool and stuff like that, which is always um, like if you're gonna be using trees, trees is really good for damage. Like, it gives you astral power and they do damage, right? They're definitely good for damage. But, um, especially if you have Necrotic, you definitely want to make sure you use it at the correct moment, right? Like, you don't want to use it at the start of a pool. 
Because at the start of a pool, the tank is still fine. This tank doesn't have a lot of necrotic stacks. He's healthy, he has cooldowns ready, right? So you want to delay your trees until a little bit later in the pool when your tank has high necrotic stacks because then you put the trees down and then the tank can actually reset his stacks and then he can um, taunt again afterwards. Of course, um, you can also have the tank call for it, but let's be honest here, most tanks don't call for trees. They don't see the cooldown. Most tanks don't call for it, even if you're in voice chat, because they just don't see the cooldown for it. They don't have a, a week or hour or anything that shows them the cooldown. So there's very few tanks who actually call trees. Okay, so now we have this Brute and the Tick Pack. Um, and we are in... We're entering Solar Eclipse. Okay. One small thing. Um, this slam doesn't have to be dodged, okay? This charge, the, the, the jump from, from the mop, does the same amount of damage if you stand in it or out. It actually is completely irrelevant, okay? This this animation is just the position where the mob is jumping to, but the damage that it does does not change no matter where you stand. So you can stand, you can you don't have to move out of this. Um, I know it's scary, but it really doesn't. So here in this at this moment, he lost a little bit of damage because he walked out of the slam, which he didn't actually need to. But so at this point, I would be pulling that. I already would have pulled a little bit earlier. Because he ends up being at 28 Astro Power again, which is just not enough for a Starfall. So I guess so far, the biggest like issue that I see is just um, not keeping enough Astro Power from pack to pack. So I personally would have played this differently because he basically sunfires the two ticks that are in the air. And he sunfires the three ads that are stacked. And then he enters the Eclipse, right? I personally would have delayed my sunfire until they're all stacked so i only have to use sunfire once because if there's like a pack that is spread out you can either sunfire 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 or you moonfire and then once they're stacked you sunfire right because then you only have to sunfire once so that's what i would have done here i would have just moonfired some of these ticks here at this point so i would just be like moonfire 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 and maybe before I Moonfire, I could even just uh, cast a Starfire. Depends on the situation, I guess. Since it is tyrannical and it's only a 15 dungeon, the mobs are dying pretty quickly. Maybe instead of casting Moonfires, I would have just immediately opened with a Starfire. Instead of applying dots, maybe I would have just Starfired immediately as well. Because now they are stacked right now, you could Sunfire. So it immediately spreads on all of them. So you save one global. And now at this point, um, I would be applying Moonfires, which he is doing, so that's fine. Using trees as well. Okay, his cooldowns are now ready, so let's see what he's doing with his Imperial Ordinance. What he should have done here in this pool is uh, he should have applied Sunfire first, because these ads are all really stacked. Okay, so instead of applying Sunfire, he immediately entered Lunar Eclipse, which means that he's missing out on the Solstice, because if you enter your Eclipse and you don't have dots up, then you don't get any Solstice ticks, which he's missing out on here. So then he put the trees to help out the tank, which is fine because the tank was actually struggling quite a bit. So it's good to have the trees here. Also a really good solar beam as well. Um, using Starfire to just cleave the ads, that is also like really good, obviously. Yeah, he didn't apply Moonfires, that's really good. When you're in Lunar Eclipse and there's so many ads up, you definitely don't Moonfire, right? He was just spamming Starfire, that was really good. So now he's in Solar Eclipse, and now he's applying Moonfires, that's great. That's exactly how you, sh you should be playing that. Okay, so the next thing he should do is, of course, do as much damage as possible to this um, Pride mob. But he should be using his Imperial Ordinance when the Pride Mob is um, at like 40% HP, I would say. Can you use his trees here? I personally would not would not have used trees here. I personally would have greeted my trees here because uh, I'm about to use all of my cooldowns. Yeah, like we're about to kill this Pride. I'm about to use all of my cooldowns on the boss. We are about to use Bloodlust. And I would have just greeted my trees for damage. Because trees do damage, yeah? Trees do a lot of damage. 
So if you have all of your cooldowns up, I personally would have greeted the trees because usually uh, the tank doesn't need trees on Pride, on the Pride map. Of course, if the tank was struggling, I would have used it. But otherwise, I would have saved my trees uh, for, for boss damage. Okay, so he's not using his Imperial Ordinance here, which uh, is going to cause uh, a pretty big loss in damage. Because we know we want to use our trinkets on the boss, right? We want to use all of our cooldowns on the boss. And the way Imperial Ordinance works is that you use Imperial Ordinance and then 20 seconds later you use your, uh, your other trinket plus your cooldowns. So at this point, now that they pull the boss, he could immediately use his cooldowns and just nuke the boss, right? Because it's also pride, bloodlust, everything. So that's what I would have done. He instead saves his Imperial Ordinance and uses it on the boss here. Like, it, it's fine, but the problem is he cannot use his cooldowns now for 20 seconds, yeah? For 20 seconds, he needs to hold on to his cooldowns so he can get his trinket back. Which m means in 20 seconds, he still has pride and he still has bloodlust. So he's not going to be losing out on too much. Um, but it would still just be better to get it immediately, right? So at this point, he's just waiting for his trinket to come back. So now he should be using his cooldowns. And he is. Okay, perfect. He even got a full moon. <laughs> big damage. Big damn, big damn. He's um, disengaging back for the smash. Ugh. Oh my god, they soak so many at the same time. Oh no, no. <laughs> okay, he's going into Lunar Eclipse, which is a mistake here because you want to go... Uh, you would want to go Solar Eclipse here because it's single target and Solar Eclipse is better, right? So after Celestial Alignment, he would want to go Solar Eclipse. So he went into the wrong Eclipse, which is not that big of a deal though. Like, that's really not... Nice, he's doing a good job refreshing his thoughts here. He's even completely outranging the smash. Ah, oh, he didn't make it. <laughs> he didn't make the outrange, but um, it's nice to min-max this because his group is struggling. You can see how low everyone's dropping here. So I really like the fact that he's outranging or that he's going so far away. Because the boss is really low. I would not have soaked this orb at all, actually. I would have just... Um, this orb here, I would have just not soaked this one. Because you see that boss is like low HP. And theoretically, you can probably kill the boss before the orb reaches the boss, I would say, almost. Unfortunately, the hunter dies here, but the boss is dead anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Like here at the very end, I would also save my Astra power again at the end of a boss fight. Because I know I'm going to be going into a trash pack soon, so I just want to have Astra power for, for Starfall, right? Now, of course, this might be a little bit of a different kind of story because everyone was so low HP. But the thing is, there's nothing happening at this point that kills you anymore, right? Because the, the charge just happened, the, the charge that you have to soak, and there's no more orbs. So at this point, you're actually perfectly safe. There's actually nothing that can kill you at this point of the boss fight. There's no ability that can kill you at this point. So I would definitely save my Astra power here. He ends up um, star surging to 11 Astra power. So now um, he's complete, completely like dry with Astra power and he's gonna take quite a long time to get a starfall up here. So he enters Solar Eclipse because that's the only Eclipse he can enter. And now he managed to get a Starfall up, so it was quite late, right? He uses his trees really good because the tank has like a lot of stacks at this point. Yes, I actually agree that his UI is a bit... Um, like the scaling is a bit big with some things. Like the minimap is already taking up a lot of space in my opinion. And this weaker is also pretty big. The player frame, yeah. The group frame is also pretty big. Like it's taking up a lot of space. I don't think the UI itself is cluttered. I think some things are just maybe a little bit too big. But if he, if he sees everything like that, then that's fine. Like I'm not gonna blame anyone's UI if you see everything. Okay, so this time he actually has uh, enough Astro Power for Starfall. So he's pre-Starfalling here at this point. I wouldn't have done this Starfall so early, because um, now 
you only have five seconds left and you surf all did zero damage, right? Because you were line of sighting. And Surfle doesn't do any damage while you stand line of sight. So at this point he's using his Imperial Ordinance. But his Convoke isn't cooldown. Uh, wait, what happened there? When did he Convoke? Okay, so he Convokes here. Okay, that, that is definitely not something I would do. Like this Convoke, um, this Convoke is definitely not good. Because your Celestial Alignment is only a 9 second cooldown at this point, right? If you, if you look here, your Celestial Alignment is on a 9 second cooldown. And you're convoking now, which means uh, you're basically just delaying your cooldowns. Like, I definitely would have waited for Celestial Alignment here. Definitely would have waited. I know that you also used your Instructor's Divine Bell. Um, so what I would have done here, I would have used my Imperial Ordinance. And then when, you, when the pack is about to die, you get the Trinket back. And then you can Convoke plus CA the next pack. Like, if you play double on use trinket in the dungeon, then that's how you have to play double on use. I personally don't like playing double on use in, in dungeons as much because of the complications that it causes. But if you're gonna be playing double on use, then you have to use your Imperial Ordinance at the end of a pack. So you can use your Celestial Alignment at the on the next pack. So... Let's say you're fighting a pack and you think it's gonna die in the next like 20 seconds. Then you use your Imperial Ordinance, your Trinket. And then within the next 20 seconds, the pack dies. Your Trinket returns to you. Your second unused Trinket is gonna be ready again because it's 20 seconds later. And then you pull the next pack and then you have your cooldowns ready, right? That's always how I would use Imperial Ordinance in dungeons. Like you always have to like pre-use your Ordinance so you can convoke the next pack, right? So yeah, instead of convoking here, I would have just used my Imperial Ordinance. So at this point here, you see that the trash pack is almost dead. And he's basically just using a star search at the very end for, for like no reason really. You see, he's at 50 Astra power and this, there's only one mob left. And at this point, the, the mob is about to die. And now you star search, right? This last star search costs you so much damage now. That's something a lot of people underestimate, the amount of damage you gain from, from pooling astral power between packs. Like that is a, a huge damage gain, yeah? That's really something you guys should do as well. When, you, when a pack is about to die, don't waste your astral power on star surges or on star falls. Because when you enter the next pack, you won't have enough astral power to starfall, right? Because at this point, um, he only has 26 astral power. And now he's entering a pack where there has a lot of mobs. Like there's like seven mobs or something. But he doesn't have enough astral power for starfall. So he's losing out on a lot of damage. Because um, the other people are doing AoE, but he cannot do AoE because he doesn't have astral power, right? So at this point, uh, they're entering this room. And you see how many mobs there are. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mobs. And at this point, he's doing nothing. He's doing no damage because he has no star fall up. He's not in an eclipse. Uh, it's just he even is entering solar eclipse instead of lunar eclipse, which is also bad, of course. Um, so yeah, at this point, you see how little damage he's doing, right? He's he's doing one uh, k DPS at this point, while the the Hunter and the Shadow Priest and the tank are doing a, a lot of damage, right? Because they are nuking it all down. While uh, you as a Moonkin, you just don't have anything. Not that that would be so important. Like, the damage on these ads is actually not very important if you really think about it. Because um, the, imp the damage on these small ads... You know, as long as they die, it's fine. So it's not actually that incredibly important for your for your group. Like for your group dungeon speed, this is not that important. But for your personal overall damage, this is important, right? <laughs> for the group's dungeon speed, maybe this is not as big of a deal. His convoke is about to get ready. I do think it's fine to, to convoke the pride here. I definitely think that's fine. 
He does have his Imperial Ordinance ready because he used it randomly before in the trash, so... He's just gonna use Instructor's Divine Bell here, which I guess is fine. Okay, so now we have Pride buff. He applied Sunfire first, he's now entering Lunar Eclipse, it's all fine. Casting Starfire with both buff, that's also fine. Okay, applying Moonfire, also fine. Reapplying Starfall, entering Solar Eclipse. Yeah, this is all fine. Yeah, this is all good. He again depleted his Astro Power a little, but we already talked about this, so I'm sure he's gonna keep, make sure he keep he's gonna keep an eye on that. But yeah, that's just like a common mistake he keeps making, uh, that he's using too much Astro Power at the end of a pack. So he ends up uh, not having enough Astro Power when he um, enters the new pack. So that's... But we, we've talked about that enough, so... <laughs> Let's see if there's any other things. So the biggest mistakes I've seen so far is the Astro Power thing. He disaligned his, his cooldowns, so he used Convoke without Celeste Alignment, even though Celeste Alignment only had an 8 second cooldown. And that was the first mistake I saw. But then he used his Imperial Ordinance without CA. So that's definitely something you should never do. Like, never use Imperial Ordinance without CA. It, it just makes no sense to disalign those two cooldowns, right? Because they're both 3 minutes, so they should always be used together. Unless maybe at the very start of a dungeon. Like, maybe at the very start, if you need your- if you don't have time, to get to wait for your Imperial Ordinance to come back. That can happen, right? Sometimes you need your damage quickly and you cannot wait 20 seconds. Well, in that case, you just use your cooldowns without Imperial Ordinance and you just, you know, you just don't use the trinket for three minutes until the cooldowns come back up. That, that you know, that's fine. It's not optimal, but it's fine. Okay, so here, I always have like a problem here in this very area and I think he's gonna have the same issue at this point. You see, um, the second boss is about to happen, and I personally think that boss is incredibly hard, and you always want to have cooldowns for that boss, right? But the problem is his cooldowns are ready now, but you see, um, they're at 56% trash, so at 60% trash the Pride is gonna spawn, and then they probably want to do the boss. So that means at this point I would hold my cooldowns. Theoretically, um, you could hold your CA and your Ordinance, but use your Convoke, right? Because Convoke is only a 2 minute cooldown, while Celeste Alignment is approximately, like, it's a 3 minute cooldown. And I personally think, at this point in the dungeon, it would probably take around 2 minutes until you reach the boss. So it will probably be fine to use Convoke at this point, without CA. So I probably will be using Convoke here. Alone, without any other cooldown. Okay, so at this point he's using his cooldowns without Imperial Ordinance. So he used uh, he used the uh, Instructor's Divine Bell plus cooldowns. So I, I think this is fine. I think this is fine, but he, he didn't use his, his trinket again. Mm, and at this point, it's uh, he only like at this point, uh, it just seems like he has to hold his trinket again for three minutes because at this point he cannot disalign his trinket again, and it just seems like a waste of a trinket at this point, right? Like if you have a three-minute trinket like Imperial Ordinance and you're not going to be aligning it with your cooldowns then it's a pretty big waste. Otherwise he's doing, like, his normal rotation is definitely fine. He's doing a good job doing his normal Moonkin rotation. He's dotting correctly, he is star falling correctly, he starts surging correctly as well. I think that's all fine, for sure. The only problems that I see is cooldown mismanagement and not pooling Astral Power at the end of packs. That's like the biggest problem I see at this point. Also, this route is a bit bad. <laughs> okay, so it turns out that um, they're not pulling the boss with this pride buff. So it's actually fine that he... <laughs> it's actually fine that he used his cooldowns. Okay, so they still have to play the Sentinel. So at this point, he's, act he's even gonna get his cooldowns back up for the boss. So he actually did a good job using his cooldowns here. Um, <laughs> 
Because this route that they're playing here is a bit unfortunate. They're just playing the bus without pride, which is definitely not ideal, but <laughs> it worked out for his cooldowns at least. It actually wouldn't have been good to use Imperial Ordinance here because it would have returned too early. So maybe it's better to just use it on a bus here. Because that Sentinel would have died too early. Okay, so let's see the Atta spawning here. His trinket returned already. In two seconds his instructor did uh, Divine Bell is ready, so he should be using cooldowns now. Okay, he is using cooldowns. Perfect. Okay, that's really good. What's he doing with his Berserking? Okay, so he's using his Berserking wrong. So he's a troll and he has Berserking as a racial. Um, Berserking is a 12 second buff that gives you haste. Uh, the thing is, Convoke the Spirits does not scale with haste at all. It does not do more damage um, if you have more haste. So you shouldn't be macroing your Berserking into your Celestial Alignment, into your Convoke macro, because uh, you're just wasting your... You're wasting four seconds of your Berserking buff. So how you should be using Berserking is you Convoke first, and now you use Berserking after your Convoke, right? Um, the Et is pulsing AoE in the whole group, right? That's what makes this boss difficult. So as a Moonkin, you always want to pull your Astra Power and you want to save your Eclipse for when the Ed spawns. So we see a timer here. He's running DBM. You can see this timer here, this coalesce manifestation in three seconds, right? So at this point, um, he used all of his Astro Pike because he had his cooldowns up. Um, I personally would have pulled Astro Power here to make sure that I have enough Astro Power for the Ed when it spawns. Because at this point, the Ed spawns. He only has 30 Astro Power. And he, ju he had just entered an Eclipse. And now he's also focusing the boss instead of hitting the Ed, right? That's definitely not what you want to do. Like, you definitely want to focus this at. So he's casting on the wrong target here for a little bit. Now he's switching, okay. Okay, so that, that was definitely a mistake there. And again, like, I would just keep an eye on this timer here. So in, in eight seconds, um, the manifestation spawns again. So at this point, I would be pulling my Astro Power. Making sure I'm going to be entering my Lunar Eclipse when the Ed spawns. Ed spawns. Uh, now, he's switching to it correctly and he also has Astro Power, so that's good. And now this is perfect because now he can nuke the Ed with his uh, Astro Power that he's got here. Oof. Okay, this is actually getting pretty close. He's also positioning himself a little bit wrong on this boss. Um, the way you want to position yourself here, if you are ranged DPS, uh, in my opinion, you also want to position yourself as far away as you can, like somewhere where... Like here. Uh, he's, where the hunter is. You see where the hunter is? The hunter is uh, pretty far back. And the reason why you want to do that is because... There's no space in f behind the boss, right? Like behind the boss, there's no space because there's the, the big pool on the, on the ground. Because when the ads die... The, the coalescing, um, whatever they're called. When they die, they spawn the pool, right? So you don't want to be surprised by that pool. If you're a ranged player, you want to play back because then as soon as that dies, the, the tank plus the melee players walk into you. And also you have to castigate. The castigate is the targeted ability that does a circle around you that does pulsing AoE. So if you're all stacked up on the boss, like if you all stand on top of each other, when the castigate happens, then all of a sudden everyone is panicking. It's like, oh my god, there's someone with castigate. The person runs out, everyone else tries to walk away, and all of a sudden you're you're like wasting a lot of time. But if you would already be outside, then there's no problem. Like look at this. Look at this castigate, yeah? The boss is targeting the Shadow Priest with the castigate. 
And now all of a sudden, the Moonkin is in a bad position, right? Because the Moonkin, the, only, the easiest way to dodge would be to the left. But the left is a bad spot because the left, uh, you're sandwiching yourself, right? In, in that moment. So now he's moving to the left and now he has this tiny little space where you're between the castigate and between the pool. And if there would be a, the at, if there's a new at that dies, then all of a sudden you're in a bad spot. If he would stand further at range, then this wouldn't be any problem for him at all. You see where the hunter stands? The hunter stands all the way back here and he doesn't care at all about this castigate. The hunter is totally fine because he's standing on range. So if you're a range player, I personally think you should always stand as far away as you can to not cause any of these problems with, with mobility, right? Because um, there's so many like area of denials and so many like things that can go wrong. So at this point, you see the ad dies. And because he positioned himself um, badly previously, now the pool is going to spawn in front of him. You see the pool spawns here now. And all of a sudden he's standing in between two pools and he's not having any space anymore to move. This only happened because um, he was just too close to the boss. If he would have been further away, then none of this would have happened in the first place, right? I mean, he's, he's still fine here, but it could have been a lot worse, right? It still ended up not being that bad for him, but it could have, it could have, could have been a lot worse. His coins are already in 14 seconds. Let's look at the percentage. They're not going to be spawning a pride here. At this point, he could use his Imperial Ordinance again on these mobs. But they're kind of close to dying, so it might be a bit too late. Maybe it's better to just save it at this point. Yeah, the mobs died too quickly. I think it was better to just save it. Yeah, I think it's better to save it for the boss at this point. Okay, so he's using his ordinance here. He's just gonna be using his cooldowns normally, which is nice. He used his trees here before his cooldowns. I wouldn't have done this because trees actually get buffed by your cooldowns too, yeah? Like trees actually benefit from your stats. And also you gain astral power from it. So it's better to gain the astral power while your cooldowns are up, right? Because you gain 20 astral power. So it's, it's better to gain 20 astral power while your celestial alignment is up. In my opinion, right? So, because then you can extra star surges or whatever. So I would have saved the trees here um, because uh, he's about to use his cooldowns here at this point. So, yeah, he's using Celeste Alignment here plus Convoke. So I would have used my trees now. Yeah, this boss does a lot of damage for sure. I think like all the bosses do a lot of damage in this dungeon, except the last boss, actually. The first, second and third boss are really, really tricky in this dungeon. Okay, yeah, his single target rotation is definitely fine. Like, he's doing a good job. Um, he's definitely doing a good job doing his normal just rotation. Like, there's definitely no issues with that whatsoever. He's saving his Convoke here, which is fine. Here, like, if you're, like, struggling a lot, like, here at this point, you see his Convoke is ready, and his Celestial Alignment is not. And usually you want to line up the cooldowns, right? But you, you see how everyone drops really low? <laughs> like, someone even died. He's casting the rest here. So you could you could theoretically use Convoke here in the boss, but the boss was so low, so yeah. But sometimes in emergency situations, you can just use your Convoke, even if you don't have any other cooldowns, um, if you feel like you need So, <laughs> the position of this uh, extra action button, I would say is a little bit questionable. Because <laughs> it's, it's so, like, center-ish. Like, it, it's really covering, like, all the nameplates, right? I would consider using this, uh, I would consider moving this button a little bit away. Like, maybe here, where my mouse right now, or like, over here or something. But this area here is like the dead center where all of the nameplates are. So you have a really hard time seeing the nameplates and seeing your dots on the nameplates, right? With this weaker, uh, with this uh, button just covering it. Oh, nice! Wait, 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 no, what happened? <gasps> no! Wait, what just happened? 
But he used his Imperial Ordinance. Let's see. Okay, so he uses his Imperial Ordinance here. Okay, so he used the Trinket. Yeah, this is the problem, right? <laughs> like, he used his Imperial Ordinance, and now he would have to use his cooldown sphere, right, to play. Like, in theory, he would have to use his Celestial Alignment plus his Convoke. But you see how low the mobs already are? Like, the mobs are already dead, basically. So it would be a pretty big waste to use his cooldowns at this point, because they're just so low already. So at this point, he decides to hold his cooldowns, but he had already used his Imperial Ordinance. So that just means he wasted his trinket, right? That's why I like using the trinket at the end of the pool and then use your cooldowns on the next pool. That's why I like doing that instead. I personally just suggest to not run Imperial Ordinance at all, to be honest, in dungeons, especially if it's tyrannical. Because it's just, it actually is really hard to use perfectly. Like using Imperial Ordinance perfectly is really hard Especially if you're pugging and you don't know the route. If there was five mobs, but they die fast, is it worth it? Mm, Sunfire is always worth it. Okay, so here's the here's the TLDR. If there's between two and four mobs, and you know that the mobs will survive until next eclipse, you moonfire in lunar eclipse or in solar eclipse, not outside of eclipse. Okay. If there's more than four mobs, is there? If there's between four and ten mobs then you only Moonfire in Solar Eclipse, not in Lunar Eclipse and not outside of Eclipse. And you only Moonfire if you know they're gonna be surviving until your next Lunar Eclipse, okay? If there's more than 10 mobs, then you just Starfire, okay? In Lunar and in Solar Eclipse. And if you're in Solar Eclipse and you know the mobs are not gonna be surviving until your next Lunar Eclipse, then you just uh, Starfire as well if there's uh, a big amount of mobs. Otherwise, you just... I mean, it depends on how much astral power you have, right? If you just need astral power for a starfall, I would just solar wrath. Because um, that's just going to be faster if you're in solar eclipse, right? But if you're just trying to kill them and you already have a starfall up, then I would just uh, start fire if they don't survive until next lunar eclipse. Okay, so his cooldowns... His convoke is ready. His incarn is still on a one-minute cooldown. Okay, so at this point he convokes. Uh, I personally don't like this. Because, okay, so here's the thing. I actually think that he does get another convoke. So he convokes here, and then he probably gets it again for the boss later. But the problem is that they're gonna get, in, they're gonna get pride. And your convoke is gonna come up after the pride buff is done. So yes, you gain an extra Convoke. Like you're actually getting an extra Convoke if you Convoke here. Um, but I personally don't think it's worth it, especially if you run double on Use Trinket. Because he's running double on Use, uh, which the only purpose to run double on Use is to buff your cooldowns even more. So in that scenario here, I definitely would not have um, casted my Convoke because you're about to get Pride buff, Bloodlust, double on new trinkets, and cooldowns. And that's like, you're gonna be doing so much damage if you have that combination, right? But because he Convoked now, he's not gonna be able to do this. Because you can see his, con his Convoke is still on a one minute cooldown now, and they're about to kill this Pride. So that means his cooldowns are gonna be back up right after the Pride. So he's missing out on all of these buffs now. So I personally just don't think that that's worth it. This diva here, this um, this arrow diva can be dodged, by the way, by literally just sidestepping. And that's something not that many people know either. Because the boss, if you go really far away from the boss, like if you go as far away as you can, all you need to do is move and it will not hit you, okay? Like, you, you can literally just move. Especially here, because you see how low he's dropping? Because he has two debuffs. 
This is his second bleed stack. So this one I definitely would have sidestepped. Because he's he's just dropping really low because uh, of this second debuff here. He did he doesn't end up dying, but it's definitely something I would have avoided. Okay, so he used his Imperial Ordinance now. But you see the pride just disappeared. So the pride buff is now gone. And he now is using his cooldown. So this is definitely a pretty big damage loss here. The fact that he didn't have his cooldowns on pull. Okay, so... Nice. Okay, so... Is it plus two? Oh no, plus one. Okay. Alright, so... I definitely think he did he did well. Um, like his his rotation is is he barely makes any mistakes with his rotation on single target and on AOE. He's definitely doing a good job with that. Um, but the biggest damage loss throughout this dungeon is is his uh, cooldown usage. The way he uses his cooldowns that's going to be the biggest damage loss because he's uh, mismanaging his trinkets. So I recommend not using Imperial Ordinance. I just don't think it's worth it. I, th I think Imperial Ordinance, um, the fact that you mismanage your trinket so much throughout the dungeon just means that another trinket would have given you a lot more damage, right? The only time Imperial Ordinance is gonna be worth it is if you really manage it properly and that's just really hard. Like, that's why I don't use it. I don't use Devil on Use because I just think it's too difficult to, to manage if you're not perfectly communicating with your tank, if you don't have like a group that you play with all the time. Because, I mean, if you play with the same group all the time and you always like have the same routes, then you really have enough time to like get used to it and you figure out when to use your double on use trinkets and blah, blah, blah. And then it's gonna be fine. But uh, if you don't play with the same group all the time and you're like pugging and whatever, then I think it's just too hard to use double on use. And if you don't use it properly, then there's no point running it, right? So I personally would unequip this trinket and equip a different one. Let's see what other trinket he has. He's got a, a quantum device, PvP... I probably would just run PvP trinkets. Yeah, I would just run this PvP trinket here. So this PvP trinket plus, um, plus the Divine Bell. That's what I would use. Uh, but yeah, outside of the... Outside of the trinket mismanagement, we also had some. Sometimes um, you use convoke without celestial alignment, which is fine, but only in very specific situations. Like I, I think the times where you use convoke without your cooldowns was just um, like it definitely would have been better if you held it. And yeah, outside of that, the only other issue that I saw that also lost you a decent amount of damage is mismanaging your astral power at the end of a pack. So just remember to think about pooling Astra Power. I know that's something that is like kind of hard to get used to <laughs> because uh, it feels natural to do as much damage as you can on the current fight, right? That just seems like a natural thing to do. It's like, oh, I have a little bit more Astra Power. I'm just going to star search this mob. So it really like takes a little while until you change the way of thinking, like the way of, you, a way of playing. So you remember that, oh, I shouldn't be star surging here because the mobs are about to die. Uh, so I have more astral power going into the next pack. Like that is really something that you need to like think about constantly to change your playstyle. Once you have figured this out, like once you remember this kind of playstyle, then it's not gonna be a big deal anymore. It's really just like changing this in your head so you keep, so you remember it. It's really just something uh, that you just need to remember. 